block set aside. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clean up our main girdle here. Um, same process as the uh, block. Just gonna run a bit of scotch right across the uh, surface of the main bearing journal. Um, just trying to clean up any debris that might be on there or any solvent that might be left over from machining. So now that you've uh, gone ahead and you've cleaned off the uh, surfaces with your scotch brite, um, you can go ahead and just wipe it clean again. Um, some areas that are going to be of uh, notable um, requirements to be cleaned. Um, because this girdle is now machined for the brace, um, there's blind holes here, so you have to go through and blow compressed air through each one of these new holes that uh, don't go all the way through, just so there's no debris behind there when you go to tighten it down. So the next piece we're going to be cleaning is just this uh, brace here, um, mostly just because it's been uh, around the machining. Um, we're just going to dry install it for our uh, machine work uh, verification first. Um, so no need to clean it good enough to seal, just make sure you got no debris on there from the machine work. Okay, so now that you've got your block cleaned, uh, your girdle's clean and your brace is clean, we'll go ahead and we're going to start installing our main studs. For the RB26, there is three longer main studs. Uh, the three longer main studs, just like the factory longer bolts, um, two in the rear of the engine, and then one right in line with this um, RB25 oil filter or oil uh, pickup boss. Um, so right in here. So when installing your main stud, like I said before, you're always going to want to make sure the hole is clean and clear of all debris. Make sure the threads are clean. You should be able to thread these in by hand, just with your fingers all the way to the bottom. And then we're gonna go around and hand tighten them with a ratchet and a socket. Once you've got your studs installed all the way by hand, you can just quickly go torque it down by hand. Um, there's no specification for this, just supposed to be hand tight. Um, it should be less than an eighth inch of turn. Um, that's how you know it's, been to, it's all the way at the bottom. Um, you shouldn't have uh, any sort of fighting or, or binding or anything like that. You might have some debris in there if you're feeling anything like that. Um, for these ones, I'm just getting an eighth inch just to tighten it down. So once you've got your main studs installed, you can go ahead and you can take your girdle. Oh, my finger. You can install it to the block just like that. Once you have your uh, main girdle installed, you can go ahead and use your ARP lube. I like to lube this surface, the washer, and the nut all together, just so you know you get good lubrication across all of it. Once you've got your girdle on, you can go ahead and you can um, put the ARP loop on each one of your washers. You can install them. And then last, you can go ahead and install the main stud nut. Make sure you get a little bit of ARP loop inside the nut. You want the threads to have a good coating as well. Okay, so once you've got your main cap or your main uh, girdle installed, um, you got your, your ARP stud uh, nuts on and your washers on, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to walk it down. Um, the main cap or main girdle is a uh, interference fit, so it does not go down without a little bit of force. Um, so you just want to walk it down gently. We're going to start from the middle and you're just going to work your way around. All right, so now that you got your uh, main studs, um, your nuts on the main studs all torqued down, uh, snug, not torqued down, just snug, uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna break up the torque spec of 60 foot-pounds into three. So we'll start with 20, work our way up to 60. So once you're done with the 20, move away up to 40 foot-pounds. Final step down to 60. Once you've got them all down to 60, run over it again at 60, just to verify nothing's changed, nothing's moved, and you've got them all down to 60. Okay, so now that we've got the uh, main studs and the uh, main girdle installed, we'll go ahead and we'll uh, bolt on our uh, brace. Again, it's just gonna be dry, we're not doing any sealant or anything like that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll install that and we'll torque it down to spec. Now we have 
have the uh, brace bolts all cinched down and uh, hand tight, we can go ahead and torque it down. Uh, the torque spec for these M8 bolts is uh, 25 foot pounds. So we're gonna start in the middle and then we're gonna work our way out. Okay, now that we have all the bolts torqued down to 25 foot pounds, uh, we're gonna flip it over and uh, install the torque plate. All right, so now that we have the uh, uh, engine flipped over, we're gonna put our head gasket on here. Set our torque plate down. Okay, we got a torque plate set on the engine here now. We're gonna go ahead and install our head studs. Same situation as the main stud. Uh, you can drop them in. Hand tighten, should go all the way down by hand. That way you, don't, you know you don't have any binding or anything stopping the, the head stud from going down with debris in the threads. Okay, so same situation as the main studs. Just hand tight on the head studs. Should be about an eighth inch of a turn if you hand tighten them all the way into the, into the block with no disturbances. Same thing as the main studs again. Lubricate the surface with ARP lube. Uh, this stuff comes in little packs with your head stud kits. So now that you got your head studs on, your nuts on, I can go ahead and torque it down. Um, ARP torque specifications is 105 foot-pounds um, and three even steps. Um, so starting at 35, work your way up from there, 35, 70, and then 105. Okay, so we're on to our last step here. Um, final torque is 105 foot-pounds. Um, some people like to take it only to 100. Um, there is a bit of a, uh, I guess, knowledge out there that uh, over 100 foot-pounds you can crack a block. Um, it kind of depends on personal preference and your experience, um, but uh, we're going to set it to 100 and then um, we'll go from there. So now that you've got your head studs torqued, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, you're going to want to torque from the middle and then work your way out in a crisscross pattern, just like any common knowledge, anyone I'm sure you know. If you're, if you're building an engine like this, you probably know a little bit. Um, I guess a little bit of common knowledge and hand tool talent is uh, required, obviously, to do something like this. Um, so now that we've got that done, um, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna flip it over. Our first checks are gonna be on the main line. Uh, we're gonna make sure after we got our line home that it's straight, um, that it's uh, knotted around and it doesn't have any taper. So the reason we're doing this on a uh, bench top and uh, not on an engine stand, uh, we'll need to access the front and the rear of the block to uh, measure the main line. Um, and then also one thing to note when you're on an engine stand, um, the way the block hanging does also distort your measurements slightly. Um, depends on what kind of stand you have. Um, if you mount it from the side, not as prominent. Um, but we always try to do mostly uh, assembly measurements and verification on a table. Okay, so next up, uh, we're gonna check our uh, main line for outer rounded taper. Um, we are going to zero it to the first one here, and then we're gonna run that through all of them. Um, what I usually do uh, is check this first just to see if we have any issues before I go ahead and I measure and make sure the size of the hole is right. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna place it in the main line. It's gonna be vertical, straight up and down. And then you're gonna wanna set, you wanna set your bore gauge to zero. Okay, so now that we're set to zero, check here. Obviously this is where we set it, so it's gonna be zero. And go back to the other side. Because the RB26 has this oil groove in here, we're gonna have to push up on our bore gauge and bring it back to the rear section. And then we're gonna compare the measurement. Right now we are at two tenths taper, which is well within the allowable limit. And then next we're gonna go back here. We're gonna be about a 45 from the vertical position to check our out of round. So we'll check here. That's what I mean for this revision. This setup should be fine. But yeah, we're right around on this one. Again, we're about two tenths, which is allowable for out of round. Um, there's a couple of specifications that uh, are required. Um, our margin of error generally is two ten thousandths of an inch. Um, one thing to note, um, depending on the bearing manufacturer, usually allowed up to one thou out of round uh, at the parting line. Um, and then usually up to a half thou out of line at the parting line on the rods. Um, so for the main line, we're looking to see um, less than two tenths taper, 
um, and less than one thou out of round uh, up to the parting line. Um, when we go and measure our uh, main line uh, size, the uh, specification is 2.3089 to 2.3091. Um, so there's two ten thousandths of uh, allowable variance inside of the size. Um, and that is the minimum spec, um, and that is what ACL manufactures as uh, the minimum bore size um, for the main line. Okay, so next we're going to check the uh, size of the uh, main line bores. Um, these should be, be within manufacturer spec of the bearing. Um, usually the bearing manufacturer will decide what size you need based on the OEM um, size as well. The common sizes for Nissan are 2.3089 to 2.3098. Um, there's definitely a, or there is a 2,000 variance between, I guess Nissan has four different sizes of bearings um, for the main line, um, and they're all within 2,000 of each other. Um, so say the first size, the smallest size is 2.3089. They'll only allow you to go up to a maximum bore size of 2.30. Uh, nine one. You're only allowed to have two thou variants in the size of your bore. Um, so that's a Nissan manufacturer specification. We're going off the bearing manufacturer specification. Um, so they're usually allowing a little bit of a larger tolerance, um, which is the half thou that we discussed earlier. Okay, so to uh, start off, uh, we obviously have to get a measurement of the uh, what this should be, um, the main journal should be. Um, so we're going to set our, our mic, we're going to zero it to the, uh, the little um, zeroing tool. Take it off, put it on a couple times, make sure that we're actually at true zero. Make sure it's square to the tool. Okay, so now you see once we get some repeatability in the zeroing of the micrometer, I would consider that set. Because we're going down to the hundred thousandths of an inch, um, it's even more accurate. Okay, so now that we know we have it set to zero, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set our micrometer to the size of the specification that the main bearing is supposed to be sitting in. And then we'll use that to zero our bore gauge. Okay, so on our two to three inch micrometer, we have it set to 2.3089. We're gonna go ahead and lock that measurement down. This little knob here locks it in place so it doesn't turn. Okay, next up, we're gonna take our bore gauge again. So when you're setting a bore gauge, you're gonna to wanna to do a left to right sweep and a forward and backward sweep to ensure that you're totally zeroed. If you find that you can't hold it in the micrometer, it's okay, just take it out, set it to the area you think it would land. Left and right, forward and back. Should always land back at the zero. Once you have that done, you know you've set your mic. And we can go ahead and start measuring the main line. All right, so now that we have our bore gauge zeroed, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna measure each line bore hole. Okay, so once you've measured it, uh, you should get close to the uh, measurement that the bearing manufacturer recommended. For this one, it is uh, on the tighter side of the Nissan specification. Um, so we're the smallest size that uh, Nissan would recommend you set it to, um, which is very close to what ACL recommends anyway, so we're in the ballpark. Um, so we're gonna go ahead now and uh, we're gonna measure the cylinder bores um, for the same things. Same thing as the main line. Uh, we're just doing a comparative measurement right now. So we're gonna pick a cylinder bore uh, we're gonna set the bore gauge to zero, and then we're gonna compare around that cylinder and then move on to the rest of them and see what we're looking like. So we just put the bore gauge inside the cylinder. We're gonna rock back and forth, just like the main line. Set it to zero. Get down to eye level. Okay, so when you're measuring your cylinder bore, once you've got it zero, you're gonna compare around the cylinder to see what kind of uh, taper at a round you have. Um, so in this case, um, we have about four tenths out of round, which is well within the allowable limit. I typically try to keep the out of round and taper below half that as well. Um, that range is uh, a pretty healthy margin. Um, it more or less is closer to what the OEM specification usually allow. Um, there are uh, engine builders out there who will push it a little bit further, anywhere from a thou or larger, uh, out of round and taper. Um, I try to keep it a little bit tighter. Um, if we do see any excessive out of round or taper in uh, the cylinders anywhere, uh, we'll send it back and get it adjusted and uh, make sure that the um, cylinders are as round as possible and uh, have no taper. Okay, 
So the taper on that cylinder going across is uh, less than two tenths. So that's good. So once you have uh, completed the same task we just did here across all six cylinders, um, what I usually do now is I'll go and I will uh, grab the piston, we'll measure the OD of the piston, and then we'll see what our piston to wall clearance is. Once I've done that, we'll go back and then we'll start recording our measurements and uh, put it on our blueprint sheet. Okay, so just like the uh, mainline measurement, we're gonna zero our bore gate or our uh, micrometer. Uh, with the zeroing block, once you get repeatable zeros, um, we can go ahead and we can measure our piston. Um, so I like to take my piston out of the, out of the box, uh, flip it upside down, and then most manufacturers will um, recommend you measure the skirt of the piston from the bottom at about a quarter inch to a half inch high. Um, so we're gonna just go ahead and do that. Okay, so we've measured our piston OD. Uh, the OD is uh, 3.4023. Um, the expectation um, from the manufacturer specification sheet is uh, 3.4025, so we're two tenths within that range. Um, so what we expected to see and what we're measuring is very accurate. Um, so now we'll go ahead and we'll zero our bore gauge in here again and we'll measure our piston to wall clearance. Um, on this application, each piston does vary a little bit. Um, so we've gone ahead and we've machined each piston to fit inside of each hole. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna, you're gonna repeat the same steps we're doing now for each individual piston. Okay, so just like last time, uh, we're gonna zero our bore gauge inside of the micrometer. I've already done this one, but again, you're gonna go left and right. Try to get to slow down so you can see on the camera. And then back and forth. You're always gonna wanna do this at eye level. Um, the vantage point of the needle will change the position that it's at, so you always wanna be straight on. So the piston that we're using for this example here um, is piston number five. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna measure the piston wall clearance in cylinder number five. Uh, our expectation is three and a half thou to four thou of piston wall clearance. Um, that is the standard uh, manufacturer specification for the uh, setup that we're gonna be running and uh, the conditions that this, pistons are gonna, this, this piston is going to live in. Here we go. We're seeing about three and a half thou approximately, right there, one, two, three and a half. Okay, so now that we've uh, measured our piston OD um, for cylinder number five, and we've measured our clearance, I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna record the uh, size of the piston. So 3.4023 um, of an inch, and then our clearance was 0035. Um, now, this is the point where I go back, I'll repeat the steps for all the pistons, record my clearances, and then I'll go back and I'll record my out around and taper for the cylinder bore. I've already done a quick comparison measurement, so I know that it's okay, but I do go back and I make sure that each measurement that I have on the block is accurate to each cylinder. And the reason I do this, if there's ever any issues and you have to come back and be like, oh, hey, like this out of round was a little more than the rest, um, that could be a sign that there's an issue. Um, mostly, it's just for my own peace of mind. I know exactly what I'm seeing and what I've written down. And if I need to come back to it later on, I know exactly what it was like. So now that we have our uh, main line all measured up, uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take it apart now. We're gonna get uh, set up to uh, measure the main bearings and uh, clean and install the main bearings. <laughs> 